This is an out of the world food city. The meat, the vegetables, the, the, the seafood, the fruit. It has its own wine tradition. It has so much. This is Hanny. Hanny and I used to work together. She is a total Malaga food guru. We are going to hit some of my favorite stops in the city. We are going to be uh, going to some really traditional taverns, a couple of modern ones as well, and just getting a real taste for what Malaga is all about. Okay, promise me this. When you go to Malaga, you'll visit the Atarathanas market. Piles of fresh seafood, mountains of olives, gorgeous fresh fruit. I believe this is the best food market in Spain. Just be sure to buy something. Remember, it ain't a museum. And be sure to hit the tapas bars serving up market fresh food and serious sherry pours. Number one, most important, boquerones. Boquerones. Amazing. Malagueños are gonna... called boquerones, they right? They are, exactly. We consume so many boquerones. These are, oops, salmonetes, another yeah. little fish, a red fish. Uh, then we have here a little bit of, I think, rosada or bacalao maybe, octopus here. We've got some gambones, giant prawns. I mean, it's just a feast for the eyes and for the taste buds. Is this a Mediterranean breakfast? <laughs> Let's call it that. Let's call it that. It is today. Fried anchovies, you've got to eat these here. Mm. Oh, so good. James left his tail. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I got caught, I got caught. I will eat my tail. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, it's really good, that cumin spice, that kind of Moorish influence exactly. um, in the dogfish. I feel like they need to rebrand dogfish. Oh, they really should. It sounds better in Spanish, I think, cathon. Yeah, yeah. Order cathon, <laughs> don't ask for dogfish. <laughs> Somebody put a, a comment on the video, because we're putting lemon on the fish, and said, do not put lemon on the fish. That comes from the olden days when fish wasn't super fresh, and so you just want the flavor of the fish. So I, I'm no go on the lemon anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I won't put lemon on fish, neither should you. Breakfast continues in a style that I could seriously become accustomed to. Fresh local seafood and crisp cava. Pinch me now. Before this, we had a little breakfast prep meeting and I was like, you know, we're not going to drink at each stop because, you know, we've got a lot to get through, but what time is it now? 11.30? I mean, it's 11.30. Mm. What are we eating here? So we have conchas finas here and then we have bolos. And how do we eat these? Well, the way we eat these is much like you would eat an oyster, but the difference is what we're going to do is load it with uh, lemon. So okay. I'm just going to show you how we do it here on the concha fina. Are you breaking it my might... lemon rule? It, I am. I was just going to say that. <laughs> it's uh, completely contrary to what James just told you, but this is very typically yeah. how we would eat it. And then we put on black pepper. So ideally, normally on uh, seafood you wouldn't put salt, but we also add a tiny bit of salt. This is a classy way to start the day, guys. Oh, wow. Mm. It's firm, super fresh. Oh, it's delicious, meaty. It tastes like the sea in the right way, when super fresh seafood tastes like the sea. Bolas, the bolas. It's just a weird name, bolas. Sí. <laughs> bolas <laughs> is actually a hybrid between an oyster and a concha fina, hence that oystery quality. A little more like an oyster, if you know what I mean. That is really, really yummy. Okay, you guys know what you're having for breakfast in Malaga. <laughs> Gracias a ti. Que tengáis buen día. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego. Okay, time check, 11.37, and we are now heading to, just over the street, to one of the most incredible bars in all of Malaga. Malaga is one of the world's oldest wine regions, and Antigua Casa de Guardia is the city's temple to the local drop. It opened in 1840 as a wine shop where you'd fill up your empty bottles, but nowadays most patrons prop up the bar and drink tumblers of sweet Malaga wine filled straight from the barrel. Malaga wine in 78 words or less, right? It's ole. We use a sweet grape. They take it from the vine uh, when it's already ripe. So it's something you would actually be able to eat from the vine. They leave it out in the sun until it becomes this gorgeous syrupy, almost raisin-like, and then they turn it into wine. So we're pairing it with pickles, essentially. We have more boccarones, more white anchovies, uh, and they've been pickled in vinegar, and we are adding to that a pickled onion and olives. The saltiness of, and, and the sharpness of the pickles really kind of cuts and complements the, the Malaga wine. It's just a great way to start any meal. <laughs> I feel like we keep starting this meal. <laughs> At some point, we need to actually have the meal. Tide is not out in Antigua Casa de Guardia. It's, it is not out anywhere. She is. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. What is the alcohol content in this? It's about 50%. 50? 15. I was going to say, I don't think it's 50. And so Hanny, with all these barrels, obviously there's a whole bunch of different wines available. Yeah. I always find it overwhelming that you can 
order any of them, right? I mean, they're inexpensive. They always come in these small glasses. And actually, insider tip, you can ask for a half glass. Really? Yeah, so they will give you a half glass to taste. You can also mix and match. So you could put a pajarete, for example, with something more dry and oh kind God. of like make your own mix. So if you come in and you just say, I want a selection of two or three half glass uh, of wine, just have a try. Like, yeah. don't be afraid. Just come Spindle in. Spindle morning here. Be yeah. good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Are we having lunch next or are we still going to keep, oh, keep getting ready for lunch? <laughs> We're still doing aperitivos. Okay. <laughs> we have so far had the world's longest aperitif, a three-stop aperitif. I actually recommend that you do that if you're feeling like really celebrating life because the aperitif is always just much more fun than the actual lunch in a way. Just aperitif, don't even get to lunch. That's what I recommend. That is the way to approach life maybe. ¿Qué tal? Hola, ¿qué tal? Soy James. Hola, James. Encantado. Estamos haciendo un video para promocionar Málaga. Ah, muy bien. Por ¿Cómo estás? As you can see, Henny is connected. <laughs> <laughs> so, where have you brought us to, Henny? I've brought us to El Almacén del Indiano. It's a, an ultramarinos, which is a delicatessen. Like any good place that you can go and do your food shopping in Malaga, you can also stop and have a beer and something to eat. Are you going to serve me more wine here? I'm probably going to serve you a beer. I, th a I feel beer. like we need a little in-between. <laughs> Will lunch happen? Wait and find out. So Mane is putting on the mojama that we're getting, the, the, the tuna belly, an olive oil that has been aged in a sherry barrel. Oh wow, that smells like sherry. Está muy rico. Ham of the sea, look at this. Ham of the sea. It's actually tuna, cured tuna loin. So they cure this stuff in salt for three weeks and then dry it out and it becomes this delicious sliceable uh, ham. You hear that? Oh, wow. How good is that, James? Oh my god, that's really good. How good is it? And you got the, you still get the olive oil flavor, mm -hmm. and the saltiness of the tuna, but with that slight touch of sherry. All right, let's go, Hanny. Okay, Onwards. let's go. Whoa. Maybe it's even lunchtime. Who knows? <laughs> or is your aperitif continuing? No, no, no. Don't, don't get too confident. <laughs> don't get too confident. <laughs> can see what's going to happen in the comments already. I'm going to get comments like, oh my God, James, you didn't put espetos in this tour. Yeah. The famous sardines on a stick cooked over a fire. Where do we have them, uh, we ideally? We have them at the beach. And ideally, we have them in Pedro Galejo or El Palo, which is the fishing district just slightly to the east. Yeah. It's still Malaga Center, but you got to get on a bus or take a 50 minute walk or a bike yeah. ride. Which we don't have time for today, given we're going we to don't. like 12 stops. We don't. Founded in 1971 as a wine cellar, Bodegas El Pimpi is now Malaga's most famous tapas bar. And I love wandering its passages and patios past stacks of wine barrels and right through to its sprawling terrace overlooking the city's ancient Roman theater and Moorish fortress. But when it comes to eating, Henny and I suggest you go elsewhere. Sort of. Yeah. We're ordering water for the first time. And vermouth. And vermouth. Don't put that on the video. It's going to yeah, yeah. ruin our reputation. Yeah, sorry, days. sorry. <laughs> My body was asking for that. I'll tell you what. So Henny, we're in El Tunnel del Pimpi. We're right alongside. Yeah. So you would say if you want to get smaller dishes, more variety, this is your spot? Yeah, absolutely. And have yeah. more of a local experience. So we have here goat from the Ashakir region, which is Eastern Malaga. Very, very typical. Slow roasted with lots and lots of garlic. Sweetness of it because it's so young is absolutely divine. And that's why I think it pairs really well with this vermouth. There's like peppercorns in here and Oh wow. What I love about Andalusia is you can get tapas of everything. You get a small serving, which you can't do in Madrid. And look how juicy that roast meat is. It is so incredibly juicy. I'm gonna, I can't stop saying the word juicy, but... We have arrived at lunch. We have arrived. Never thought we'd get there. <laughs> Given lunch has finally begun, it's time to commit and head to one of my favorite tapas bars for a big meal in the city, Meson Mariano. So this place, Meso Mariano, kind of has a soft spot in my heart. I remember discovering it with friends uh, and it was just like the perfect 
Malagueño Taverna. It's really a family-run business. His daughter is behind the bar with him. One of the places that's classically, classically for the people of Malaga. If you want to know you're in an authentic place, is there drinks and beer barrels and, a, and an alcohol fridge shoved up against the wall <laughs> yeah, exactly. under a countertop? If there is, you're in an authentic place. Exactly. Lunch has arrived. Lunch, and this is a very, very large portion as well. Yeah, right. And gaspachuelo. You see, it's got quite a unique color for a soup. Merluza, which is hake. Uh, we have these gorgeous big langostinos. Um, we have an egg and we have potato. But what gives it this creamy white base is, don't freak, mayonnaise. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> there are very few times on Spain Revealed YouTube extravaganza that I actually eat something for the first time. Yes, like mayonnaise, but that scared me, but not too much. Fishy, but not too fishy. Fresh, but not too fresh. Look at this huge chunk of hake. It's okay. creamy and rich and absolutely exactly as a gazpachuelo should be. Mariano has a bit of a thing for artichokes, and he offers a variety of different preparations. Gracias. Do you want to just flip that ham off for me? Let's see what we've got here. We Lovely. Look at that. May I? You may. Oh. So perfectly cooked, so tender. Olive oil and artichoke, unadulterated, the flavor of the vegetable. You know, one of the beautiful things about Malaga, and you saw that when we walked through the market, is it just has a wonderful produce. Yeah, we've got the seafood, we've got the meat, we've also got great fresh vegetables and fruit. Tuna? Yeah. Prunes, yeah. and then this gorgeous oniony sauce. Alright. Wow. Oh, I'm gonna lose it. Oh. oh my god. That is so good. That is so good. It's sweet with the tuna, it's, it's got the spice. Oh my god, it's better than I remember. Meso Mariano people. Muy bien, Raúl, encantado. Yes, now that is a tapas bar, guys. That is a tapas bar. Can I say it again? That is a tapas bar. Great thing about this place, as well as amazing wines, they do fantastic tapas. You can sit in the high tables in here and have tapa, or you can sit down and have a proper lunch. And I mean, I've been in here from 11.30 in the morning till six o'clock in the afternoon having lunch in the house. So. So, yeah. I told you Henny knows her food and enjoys it. <laughs> she enjoys her food. Heads up, fellow wine nerds, Los Patios de Beatas is the Malaga spot to drink Spain's best vino. They've got a Coravin machine, which means you can drink serious wines by the glass without the bar having to open the actual bottle. I took the opportunity to try a big, rich Rioja that would normally be way outside my budget. I am about to drink Spain's most expensive Rioja. I mean, it's probably not, but this is 16 euros a glass. You can get a half glass. This is an eight euro 50 half glass. You just, I, I know if you're, you know, in the States, that's like just, you know, a glass of house wine, that's what that costs, but this is like pushing out the boat in Spain, so, all right. Spain too often forgets to put its world-class olive oil front and center, so I was glad to see that our waiter, dressed like some sort of gastro ninja, gave the excellent local stuff the respect and 15 seconds of fame it deserved. So, Hanny, this is obviously a place where more for like modern food. And Absolutely. this is a dish you recommended, like the wine is great. What do we got, like black cod or something? We have, it's exactly what we've got. Black cod with sesame and coconuts. Camilo makes these more modern dishes. He likes to fuse the South American, Latin American influence with the Malaga produce. And so we've got black cod with sesame and a coconut sauce, which is absolutely divine. Okay. So you need to get some of the sauce, like that's super important. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Oh wow. The salty cod, but the sweetness of the coconut, and the crunchiness, yeah, that's lovely. That's really, really good. <laughs> Hasta luego. Where are we going next, Hanny? Where are, are you dragging to me Palo to next? Cortado, and I'm Palo just Cortado. thinking of the best route. I think we are gonna go this way. We're gonna go that way. I mean, just standing here in Plaza del Obispo and just kind of enjoying the beauty of Malaga for a sec between stops. There's music, there's the sound of a 
a burbling fountain, the cathedral up behind us, the sun. Tell me about this place. So Palo Cortado is based around local produce. Again, really, really champions of local produce. Spanish cooking. There's a bit of fusion in there. A bit posher, if I'm honest. Yeah. Uh, but very, very well done. So we're going to try here Ajo Blanco. We. But I was trying we're to like, think. We'll have, we'll have sparking water. He's like. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll have that. He Did really he twisted our arm. <laughs> It's very good white wine. So Muchas Moscatel, gracias. as Henny was explaining, is a grape that is traditional to Malaga and a lot of the, the older, those Victoria novel sweet wines, but it's used in the dry wines as well and you can tell mm. in a white when it's really fragrant on the nose. Oh, ole, qué bonito, qué refrescante. Yummy, 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 look at that. Ajo blanco, it's made from almonds and garlic. Oh yeah. This is thick, it's really creamy. Wow, and you can taste the garlic in there. That is the best ajo blanco I've ever had. They gave us another dish. They gave us another dish we have to try. The tuna with a fried egg on top. Spicy tuna, like a kimchi tuna kimchi. with some spicy egg on it. It's tuna, it's slightly sweet, it's spicy in the back of your throat, there's an egg on there. I love it that it's not cooked, you know? It's fresh, it's raw tuna. I'm going in. With a fried egg. Hanny, what's left? I think I'm still alive. I may be in the afterlife, I'm not sure. Why not? Gracias. 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 Hasta luego. We are doing it. We're killing it, James. We're killing it. We're, We're killing, killing it. it. Well, now we need to like just regroup one second. Where are we going? Where are we going? We're going this way. Hello. I know. I, she knows. I know. She's playing with us, guys. <laughs> She's toying with us. With my stomach at breaking point, Hanny led me to Meson Antonio, a classic tavern tucked into an alleyway that nails Malaga's famous local salad. Meson Mariano. Meson Antonio. Joder. Yes. Meson Antonio. Si. Sí. Meson Antonio. I got the name wrong. <laughs> Ensalada Malagueña. We, we have a curious combination of boiled potatoes, bacalao, which we talked about earlier, the salt yeah. cod, orange, olives, white onion, green onion, and really good olive oil. The food that came from the workers who worked up in the mountains because of what they had readily available. The yeah. salt cod obviously adds an extra element of flavor. The saltiness, the salt cod, sweetness of the really juicy orange, the olive, it's really good, the potato. I mean, yeah, I'm just gonna name the ingredients, which is so boring, but <laughs> try this when you come here. It's really, really good. This one. Antonio, don't call it Meso Mariano. Very embarrassing. At that last bar, my credit card was declined. I don't know why. Obviously, my bank is telling me you have eaten too much. You've gone, nobody has ever gone to this many tapas bars in one sequence. But we have one more stop. Hopefully I can pay. If not, I'll, I'll send some cash to Hanny. But it can't be too expensive, right? Hanny, it's ice cream. It's ice cream. But this is famous ice cream. It's famous ice cream. There is only one name in ice cream in Malaga. Casa Mira. The family-run company opened their first ice cream parlor in the city in 1890, but Henny took me to a classy little joint they've just opened, happily near my hotel. Una pequeña de limón y una pequeña de Malaga. Let's try these ice creams and these bits and bobs. We have bits and bobs. The wheels are totally coming off. <laughs> Whose wheels are coming off, James? All the wheels Is it are my coming. Wheels? All the wheels are coming off. So I've. I'm like having my cake and eating it here. I've got limon, just for like freshness. That's really good, that's really good. But I have the unrefreshing option, just to bookend that we started early on, we had Malaga wine, and now I'm having Malaga wine ice cream. Chunks of something in it. Yeah, pasta. Mm. It does kind of, not really, but kind of tastes like Malaga wine. Okay, so we're gonna finish our ice creams in what may be the world's classiest ice cream bar with this sheet of marble. Uh, if you are coming to Malaga and you want great foodie tips, follow this woman, Henny. Her Instagram is down happening here somewhere, full of foodie tips, eating tips. She's amazing, as you have seen. And guys, there's a video appearing, I think right here, with some of my favorite places to eat in Andalusia. Check that out, and we'll see you over in that playlist now. Hasta luego. Ciao. Ciao.